हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सचना अरोरा एंड आई टीच एट श्री गुरु गोबिंद सिंह खालसा कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ सो द मॉड्यूल टाइटल इज मल्टी लेटरलिज्म एज अ मर्जिंग पावर्स आर टेकिंग द सेंटर स्टेज इंटरनेशनल सोशल इकोनॉमिक एंड सिक्योरिटी अफेयर्स न्यू नॉर्म्स एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन आर बींग कंटेस्टेड एंड दे डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव आर ट्राइंग टू एडजस्ट अकॉर्डिंगली एंड अन ईजिली so this has given a new dimension to the concept of multilateralism so this module describes the various aspects of multilateralism this module also throws some light on the theories especially the two most important theories on multilateralism that is the reflectist and the rationalist theory which basically involves comparison between western and the indian perspectives no less is a, no less important is the role of norms and institutions because that define the multilateralism in a very different way objective of the studies are to describe the concept of multilateralism in international politics to discuss rationalist and reflectist theories which is a comparison of western and indian perspectives role of institutions and norms in defining the multilateralism in an ever changing world and to analyze the transformed nature of contemporary world order that is tended to add additional layers to the traditional definition and practice of multilateralism multilateralism has been traditionally understood as an institutionalized collective action by an inconclusively determined set of sovereign nation states as such it is a significant instrument for ordering and reordering world politics multilateralism and the world order share a dialectical relationship multilateralism institutionalizes a world order by embedding the new norms into it however when the existing norms become dysfunctional with the passage of time multilateralism redefines or displaces them thereby transforming the very world order that it once helped to institutionalize therefore the concept and the praxis of multilateralism can be scrutinized at two levels institutional and normative while the institutional facet of multilateralism has been more stressed by the rationalist theory the normative aspect of multilateralism has been more emphasized by the reflective theory the functioning of the institutional and normative dimensions of multilateralism eventually transforms with the corresponding contextual change in the world order This chapter aims at developing a conceptual and praxeological understanding of multilateralism against the backdrop of a shifting world order. This chapter is divided into 3 sections. The first section assesses the role of institutions and norms in defining multilateralism in an ever-changing world. The second section analyzes the transformed nature of contemporary world order that is tended to add additional layers to the traditional definition and practice of multilateralism. Finally the third section sets out to discuss the distinctive conceptualization of multilateralism by rationalist and reflectivist approaches in western and indian ir defining multilateralism institution versus norms the first documented use of the term multilateral to describe an international arrangement date back to 1858 whereas the noun form of the word multilateralism only came into use in 1928 in the aftermath of first world war james kaposo points out that norm comes in the form of an ism suggesting a belief or ideology rather than a straightforward state of affairs a definition outlined in us foreign policy in 1945 supports this observation during the second half of the 20th century the nature of world politics changed almost beyond recognition due to unprecedented developments in the sphere of economy and politics In the economic sphere the technological revolution in transport and communications closely integrated national economies by facilitating increased cross border flow of trade investment and finance in the political domain the collapse of communism and the triumph of capitalism gave way to a world with a single dominant neoliberal political ideology these developments created conducive atmosphere for enhanced exchanges among nation states in this changed circumstantial backdrop multilateralism was defined 
as international governance of the many and its fundamental principle was opposition of bilateral and discriminatory arrangements that were believed to enhance the leverage of the powerful over the weak and to increase international conflict. Ruggie's alternative definition restricted multilateralism to action among three or more states on the basis of generalized principles of conduct. Two corollaries of generalized principles of conduct were indivisibility among the members of a collective with the respect to the range of behavior in question and diffuse reciprocity expected by each member to yield a rough equivalence of benefits in the aggregate and over time. Indivisibility can be thought of as a scope, both geographic and functional, over which cost and benefits are spread. The generalized principles of conduct usually come in the form of norms, exhorting general if not universal modes of relating to other states, rather than differentiating relations case by case on the basis of individual preferences, situational exigences or prior particularistic ground. Diffuse reciprocity adjusts the utilitarian lenses for the long view, emphasizing that actors expect to benefit in the long run and over many issues rather than every time on every issue. Kihonen opines that Ruggie's definition is most valuable for studying possible transformation in world politics. At the beginning of 21st century, another phase of transformation in world politics became visible. Firstly, the UN system as a multilateral forum had transformed both in terms of the strength and character of its members and the scope of its numerous specialized agencies. Secondly, the UN system was not the only instrument of multilateralism. The cropping up of multiple regional organizations, EU, SARC, ASEAN, SCO, APAC, G4, provided alternative venues for operationalizing multilateralism. Additionally, the onset of a worldwide financial recession in 2007 began to expose loopholes in the existing multilateralism arrangements presented a change, changed concept to the theory and practice of multilateralism. It is evident that the design of multilateral organizations and their associated law by many nations, each of which has its own concern, is a very difficult task. This task has been made, made more difficult in the last decade or so by major changes in economic and geopolitical relations and worsening disequilibrium in global commodity, currency and asset markets. Multilateralism 2.0 The multilateral arrangements are being transformed by two major developments in the contemporary world. The first is a trend towards multipolarity as expressed by the emergence of rising powers that have started acting as key players in world politics. Unlike the historical phases when only a few or even one player dominated the geopolitical game, today it seems that several nation states are becoming dominant players as global or regional actors. The voting behavior of the BRICS countries in the UN and their presence in the G20 exemplifies this trend in their drive to mold the functioning of world politics in accordance with their national or regional interests. These rising powers have organized themselves on the basis of various issue-based multilateral forums such as IPSA and BASIC. The second and related development is marked with the proliferation of regional organizations and their increased influence on the exercise of multilateralism. Since 1974, the European Union, for instance, has been an observer in the United Nations General Assembly. But on 3rd May 2011, the UNGE improved the EU status by granting its speaking rights. The United Nations General Assembly resolution also opened the door for other regional organizations to request the same speaking rights. While some UN members warned that this could unbalance one state, one vote rule within the United Nations, the other argued that this opening towards regional organizations brought with it new opportunities. Thakur and Van wrote the policy authority for tackling global problems still belong to the state, while the sources of the problems and potential solutions are situated at transnational, regional or global level. As such, the building blocks of multilateralism, the nation states seem to be less and less capable of dealing with the challenges of globalization. But because the multilateral world is so dependent on the input of nation states, 
multilateralism itself is not functioning well. The comparative decline of state sovereignty has paved the way for the emergence of supranational multilateral bodies like the European Union. In practice, the West expects multilateralism to foster governance, whereas the other actors seem to expect that multilateralism should reproduce sovereignty. Not surprisingly, China, India and Russia tend to identify multilateralism with the workings of the UN. To tackle this challenge, emanating from the safeguarding of sovereignty, the European Security Strategy, the first ever common strategic document of the EU, adopted by the European Council in December 2003, occurs a central place to the concept of effective multilateralism. Effective multilateralism has been described by ESS as the development of a stronger international society, well-functioning international institutions, and a rule-based international order. As such, it stresses that international organizations, regimes and treaties can become effective if the EU is ready to act when their rules are broken. Effective multilateralism thus appears to imply enforceable multilateralism. In response to the criticism of US unilateralism, a new concept, new multilateralism has been generated. In 2009, Joanna Mendelssohn for man wrote, almost a decade into the 21st century, the United Nations has yet to think strategically about a new multilateralism that will address the threats our nation faces, threats not only from other states, also forces that will address that do not respect borders. These so-called transnational threats, including the spread of infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS, the perils of organized crime which can destabilize fragile states, the increased impact of global warming on development and sustainability of agriculture, the unchecked proliferation of nuclear weapons and the ongoing internal conflicts that negatively affect regional development or all our areas where the global mechanisms provided through UN agencies can be used to expand our national capacities to address them. If multilateralism is used effectively, the United States can rebuild its reputation in the community of nations. Well, Foreman discusses the concept of new multilateralism to emphasize the need to remake the repute of the U.S., which has been maligned due to excessive unilateralism and to highlight the continued relevance of U.S.-UN partnership. Nigav Woods carves out this concept in the light of the transformed role of multilateral institutions such as the International Monetary Fund. Starting from a traditional understanding wherein multilateralism was viewed as the acting together of several sovereign nation states for execute a common course of action to new multilateralism that encompasses the influence of growing number of national, supra and subnational actors, the conceptual and paradoxical dimensions of multilateralism have undergone a sea change. This change has been captured by the theories of multilateralism that can be broadly categorized under two heads, rationalist and reflectivist. Since IR as an academic discipline remains dominated by the West, most of the rationalist and reflectivist theories on multilateralism was initiated by the Western scholars. However, this Western theorization has been further expanded by Indian scholarships on multilateralism. Rational and Reflectivist Theory The initial efforts toward theorizing multilateralism in the West can be traced to the work of Keone, Ruggie, Cox and Rosno. While Keone subscribes to the rationalist tradition, Cox and Rosne are committed to the reflectivist school. Ruggie lies somewhere in between. Keone defines multilateralism as a practice of coordinating national policies in a group of three or more states through institutional arrangements having persistent set of rules that constrain activity, shape expectations and describe rules. Keone view find response in writings of Ruggies. According to Ruggie, multilateralism depicts a generic institutional form in international relations that coordinate relations among three or more states on the basis of generalized principles of conduct. While J.N. Dixit and Shashi Tharoor largely associate the concept of multilateralism with the regulatory problems of multiple coexisting states as members of universal multilateral institutions like the UN, B.S. Prakash 
warns the changes in the multilateralism are not limited to the UN system as sub-regionalism or pan-regionalism has evolved as another multilateralism reality that challenges the universal character of traditional multilateralism. Unlike the Western scholars who suggest that regional organizations like the EU have multilateral in their DNA and who sense continuity rather than contradiction between the forces of regionalism and multilateralism, the Indian scholars consider regionalism as an obstacle in the move towards multilateralism. The majority of Western scholars, Hajim's Eder and Mansfield, assert that regionalism is not blocking multilateralism but is facilitating its development whereas the majority of Indian scholars like Jagdish Bhagwati, Nupun Agrawal and Sayantan Gupta argue that regionalism might not be a building block or a stepping stone but rather a stumbling block in the path of multilateralism. They argue that the economic rents produced through multilateral trade diversions adversely affect the political economic interests of many regional special interest lobby groups. Consequently, these groups push the government to stop moving further in the direction of multilateralism. Acharya's notion of new multilateralism involves a mix of three types of factors. Counter-hegemonic coalitions, cosmopolitan moral movements, knowledge-based epistemistic communities. Though Acharya borrows the concept of counter-hegemonic coalitions from Cox and epistemic communities from Alder and Haas, the manner in which he utilizes these concepts for explaining the role of leadership in new multilateralism makes his contribution more than a mere application of existing Western ideas to the non-Western context. Unlike the Western practice of acknowledging the hegemonic leadership of US in creating post-war multilateral order, Acharya argues that the actors of new multilateralism provide a leadership that goes beyond the structural leadership of the global hegemon. He demonstrates that some of the most creative contributions of new multilateralism, such as the report of International Commission on Intervention and State Sovereignty, are neither American-led nor produced by a formal governmental organization. The sociological bent of Acharya's reading of multilateralism opens greater space for entrepreneurial leadership. A symmetrical interdependent character of the contemporary world, wherein no state can fulfill its aspirations unilaterally, the question of how a nation state perceives the nature of its collaboration with other regional and global powers in the pursuit of its aspiration is central to the theory and practice of multilateralism. Though multilateralism as a joint venture of various nation-states for accomplishing certain well-defined common aspirations is not a new phenomenon. The nature of its practice has transformed over time with the parallel change in the world order and its influential actors. While the world order has become more multipolar with the rise of many emerging powers, the influential actors are not just sovereign nation-states that are labelled as major powers or emerging powers, but also various sub- and supranational forces that have recently cropped up as new actors of multilateralism. Consequently, the concept of multilateralism has been redefined. Robert B. Zollick in his article entitled Redefining Multilateralism comments, Today's globalization and markets reflect huge changes in information and communications technology, financial and trade flows, mobility of labor and vast new competitive forces. New economic powers are on the rise, making them stakeholders in the global system. The greater sensitivity towards the temporal and spatial dimensions of multilateral practice in the works of Indian scholars establishes multilateralism as a more regional, normative and dynamic concept. The creative employment of sociological conceptual tools like norm localization by Indian theorists aids in developing an improved understanding of the complex interface between regional and global dynamics of multilateralism over time. To sum up, I can say this module looks at the changed world, the changed scenario and the new dimensions and the new shape it has given to the concept of multilateralism and the, all the latest happenings around and the, all the theories and concepts happening around multilateralism has added a kind of new layer and a new dimension not just in the concept of 
in the study of international politics but also in the study of political science in general. Thank you.